Hello and welcome everyone. Today's video features a complete review guide of the Tier 10 Royal Navy Aircraft Carrier, HMS Malta. The Malta class aircraft carrier was a large British aircraft carrier design of World War II. Four ships were ordered in total in 1943 for the Royal Navy, but due to changing tactical concepts, Based on American experience gained during the Pacific War, it led to repeated changes to the design, which was not completed before the end of the war, resulting in all four ships being cancelled in 1945 before they were actually laid down. Now, in World of Warships, HMS Malta will be initially available for 34,950 doubloons in the armory as well as in the premium store, up until the 28th of October, when Malta will be transitioned over for 268,000 coal. Now, personally, I found the Malta quite easy just to pick up and play, and I stress I'm not someone that plays CVs regularly at all. I was usually able to land reliable damage numbers with all three types of attack aircraft, making them feel all quite versatile, with the torpedo bombers definitely feeling the strongest. Now Malta does feel quite similar to the other British aircraft carriers, getting quite strong reserves on all of her squadrons, including quite short plane restoration times. Now despite not having the fastest planes, they do feel quite tanky and are capable of withstanding quite a lot of damage before going down. So, before looking at the Malta stats in more depth, let me quickly put up the Captain build I have been using during testing, and it's the same build I'm using in this gameplay footage. So, if you are still feeling a little inexperienced in dodging flak, one could quite easily drop sight stabilization and last gasp, and go with enhanced aircraft armor instead to provide even more plane survivability but that's just a personal choice. As for the rest of the build, it's what is quite similar to what one would build for on the majority of the Royal Navy aircraft carriers. So here, using a simple port screenshot, we can see the Malta's armor layout. Standout point here is the Malta having quite a strong armored deck, largely covered with 102 millimeters of armor with 25 millimeters on both the bow and stern deck plating with additional sections of 38 mm deck armor. Both the fore and aft end armor belts and the hangar plating all consist of 21 mm. Now it must be also noted the 21 mm hull plating which can be quite useful in shattering the high explosive from many destroyers. Now the main armor belt is made up of 102 mm of protection and is raised, so you need to be aware of making any kind of gamer turn while spotted, due to this very large citadel that also sits well above the waterline, makes it feel very exposed and is quite easily punished by battleships. Now all of this ties directly into the Malta's survivability of 66,600, which is marginally more than its tier 10 compatriot HMS Audacious. And finally, they both get the same torpedo protection damage reduction of 34%. Moving to the most important stats of any aircraft carrier, the planes themselves. Starting with Malta's attack aircraft, which are quite similar to other British aircraft carriers. Malta's attack aircraft have a very short machine gun phase and despite having a large aiming reticule, each attack drops up to 40 rockets, allowing you to comfortably target and strike enemy destroyers. Now cruisers and the superstructures on battleships are also preferred targets of opportunity. Now these rockets are really quite useful, so you shouldn't ignore them when cycling through your attack squadrons. So let's look at their exact numbers. As you can see, I've put up a graphic here on screen. The aircraft get 2,440 hit points, 
we have a max speed of 191 knots with a base speed of 147. Engine boost time of 6 seconds, 4 aircraft per attacking flight, 12 per squadron with 20 on deck. They have an aircraft preparation time of 1 every 58 seconds and a detectability range of 10 kilometers. Each aircraft drops 10 rockets with a max damage of 2350 and these can pen 28 millimeters of armor high explosive rockets with a 10 percent fire chance next are the torpedo bombers and what i would consider to be the focal point of your damage dealing now these are virtually the same as the stock torpedo bombers on the audacious but with an increased four torpedoes per drop with above average flooding chances good damage and short arming distance now once you are fully aimed these torpedo bombers can turn around quite easily making landing hits on target feel quite reliable and they really hit quite hard now one of the main advantages of a short arming distance is that you can literally drop them in the face of an enemy ship allowing you to land hits even on more maneuverable targets like cruisers and with some practice Hitting destroyers will also be possible. Having three squadrons also allows you the ability to cross drop. The only oddity about these is the drop pattern can be a little erratic at times. So let's move on and look at the exact numbers on these torpedoes. I've added a graphic here on screen also. These torpedo bombers, they get 2,669 hit points, a base speed of 146 knots, when boosted, maxed out to 184 knots. They have an engine boost time of 22 seconds. Four aircraft per attacking flight. Again, the same 12 per squadron with 20 on deck. The aircraft preparation time is one every 58 seconds. And they have the same detectability range of 10 kilometers. Each aircraft drops one torpedo with a max damage of 5,933 and with this build they have a torpedo speed of 37 knots, a torpedo range of 2.4 kilometers and a torpedo arming distance of 444 meters. Moving to the Malta's dive bombers, Malta is capable of dropping a whopping 20 bombs per drop on target while retaining the same ability of the Royal Navy CVs for delivering their payload in a carpet bombing fashion. Now Malta comes with armor piercing bombs with improved penetration angles. Now due to their nature as carpet bombers, the planes drop their bombs at an angle that varies in relation to their airspeed. So drastically reducing this airspeed right before release will allow for a more direct vertical bomb flight which greatly increases the chances of getting citadel hits in particular on cruisers and even against heavily armored battleships you will reliably get way more penetration damage so let's look at the exact numbers on these armor piercing dive bombers they get 2570 hit points they get a base speed of 144 knots when fully boosted to 182 knots. Engine boost time of 22 seconds. Five aircraft per attacking flight. 15 per squadron. 25 of these aircraft on deck. And these aircraft have a preparation time one unit per 46 seconds. Now these drop four armor piercing bombs per aircraft, each with a max damage. 4300 so that's it with the aircraft Malta gets a secondary battery armament of eight twin mounted 113 millimeter guns and they only have a short firing range of five kilometers they have a reload time of five seconds firing high explosive shells these 113 millimeter shells can inflict a max damage of 1600 they can pen 19 millimeters of armor with an eight percent fire chance and they have a shell speed 
of 746 metres per second. Malta comes armed with an automated depth charge airstrike. This has a reload time of 25 seconds and a automated max firing range of 8 kilometers and each strike drops one bomb with a max damage of 4,900. Moving to the AA defense, Malta gets an AA defense rating of 80, 9 sestuple 40mm guns and these secondary battery are dual purpose. These eight twin mounted 113 millimeter guns. All combined, they pump out a continuous average damage of 332, the vast majority of which is medium range. Malta fires six shell explosions per flak salvo with a max damage of 1540, and these have a max firing range of 5.8 kilometers. In terms of manoeuvrability, Malta gets a base speed of 33.6 knots. You can increase this to 35.3 knots with the Sierra Mike signal flag. A turning circle radius of 1220 meters and a rudder shift time of 16.9 seconds. Now finally, stats wise, Malta with this build it's a concealment rating of 33, which equates to a surface detection range of 15.2 kilometers. You'll be detected by enemy submarines and by enemy aircraft at 12.2 kilometers. Additionally, I would highly advise using the Andrew Cunningham bonus commander if you happen to have him. Gives a bonus to aircraft preparation time and aircraft airspeed, which are both very useful to the Malta. When it comes to her strengths, I instantly think of the torpedo bombers, thanks to their arming distance and the plane agility. You can simply hunt down and target everything with them, including destroyers. Don't make the mistake I made quite a bit in the beginning and focus too hard on one or two types of squadrons. Constantly rotate and make use of all your squadrons because they are all useful. No matter what target you're facing, there should be at least one squadron to deal with it available. To summarize, you can still attack enemy cruisers and battleships with bombers and torpedoes, alternately using rockets to trigger fires when possible, and when dealing with destroyers, use both rockets and torpedoes. Malta is an aircraft carrier that simply scoffs at plane losses, having very tanky planes, large reserves, quick plane regen time, this simply allows Malta to deal with basically any threat you come across. So I hope you enjoyed this review guide, if you'd like to see some live gameplay, feel free to come over and visit me on Twitch, I look forward to seeing you all.
like to thank you once again all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Take a moment to check out some of my most recent videos and leave a comment below. And until the next time, keep sealing it like you stole it.